Hey everyone, the new Microsoft Whiteboard is coming once again. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know that we have a lot of videos here that cover the Microsoft Whiteboard. Both the version that you download for Windows, as well as the version that we find in Microsoft Teams and online in a web interface. Now, the version in Teams and online on a web interface is a great way to access the Microsoft Whiteboard if you're using a Mac, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, if you're using Microsoft Teams, because it's a consistent environment, it's a consistent whiteboard that's available on those platforms. But the version that you download for Windows is a version that I'm very fond of. It has a lot of features and functionality that I use every single day in my classes and I've got hundreds if not thousands of hours of time working with that product. So a while back when Microsoft announced that a new version of the Microsoft Whiteboard was coming out and I saw the new version of the Microsoft Whiteboard, I tried to do some of the things that I am used to doing on the download version and I wasn't able to do that. So I posted a video about that and some of my disappointments about it and Microsoft actually contacted us and we had a look at it, we had a discussion around it. Well now I see that there's going to be a new version coming out really soon and I'm super excited to see what's been incorporated into it. In this video, I'm going to show you a typical lecture that I might do with the version that I download for Windows and how right now the version that we have on the web really won't let me do those things. And I'll follow this up later when the actual version for the web gets released and we see whether I'm able to do this. I went into the Microsoft Whiteboard, saw that the new one's coming. So here's the old one. I'm going to grab the ruler and I'm just going to use my center mouse wheel to adjust the ruler to the exact angle that I want. This is a handy feature and I am using my surface here so it's a little slow but I get a nice straight line at exactly 90 degrees so I'll just bring this down to zero degrees. Now I'm not super good on my surface with spinning the wheel but it's my center mouse wheel so it's quite fast on my desktop. So we'll do a zero percent and then we'll go ahead and do the classic 45 percent. So this might be a typical lecture where I'm talking to my students and I just want to draw a simple graph, a classic uh, rise over time graph. So this could be whatever percentage I want, but I'm just going to do right now the, the classic 45 degree. So I've got my line here and you'll notice that I extended it a little bit too much. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to erase the top part of that line. So let me go, oh, I accidentally drew on there, but that's okay. I'm going to grab the eraser and I'm going to go in and I'm going to just erase the portion of the line that I want. In fact, if I go in, I can erase little pieces of the line and you can see that I now have a little space where I can put in any type of notation that I want in there without the line getting in the way. I'm actually going to write on here, so I'm going to have function on one side and this is going to be the amount of function over time. So I'm going to be talking to my students about software development. I'm going to talk about how over time we are going to make it better. If I lasso my function word or my time word, I can also enhance and convert it to text. So that's a handy feature as well if my handwriting isn't looking so great. I'm going to go grab a Bing image. In my case, I'm going to type in what I'm looking for. On my surface, I can also write it in with ink. So I'm going to look at the software development lifecycle. And you'll notice it gives me a bunch of Creative Commons software development life cycles. Here's one that I like. So I'm going to take this little image that I have here of the software development life cycle. And that's what I'm going to put in the gap for each of the line portions. So you can see that as I go through different versions, as I go through iterations, I'm increasing the amount of function over time. Each version is better than the one before. I'm even going to have one here as a reference. And I just used a control C, control V to copy and paste that. So there I have it. I can make some notations on there. We could go to the new whiteboard on the other hand. I have a lot of features that I really like. So we're going to go in here and you can see I'm going to app.whiteboard.microsoft.com and logging in. And here I'm going to try to do the exact same thing. So it takes a little while to open up and that might just be my internet connection here. But it takes a little while. I have all my whiteboards saved there. And if I go in to create a new whiteboard, so I'll go ahead and create a new whiteboard and I'm going to do the exact same lecture, but you'll notice that I'm not able to do it in the exact same way. And there is a question, is it as good or is it uh, still functional? And I sort of like, I think the jury's kind of out on that. So here I have these great things like my, my templates and all sorts of cool things. I have my pens, but I don't have the ability to use the ruler. So instead, I'm going to go and add a line in. 
So here I can add a line, but you'll notice I don't know whether that's 90 degrees, 89 degrees, whatever it may be. There's no way for me to find out. So I'm just going to have the line there. It does look a little bit off, so I'm going to try to straighten it to the best of my visual ability to see that. And then I'm going to put a, another line down here. So we'll just go down here and make uh, the bottom axes here. And then I will go and do what I hope is a 45 degree line, but it could be 43, could, you know, maybe it doesn't matter for the lecture. I've gone a little bit over, but notice here, if I use the eraser, it's not going to allow me to erase the top of that line. The best I can do is get rid of the line altogether and draw it again. Here, if I draw a line using the pen and go to erase, notice the erase doesn't uh, allow me to take a segment out. It takes the whole thing out. So the eraser behaves a little bit differently and I don't have that ruler. When I go to images, you'll notice that I go to my file system. So again, I do not have the ability to do a search directly from the whiteboard for an image. There is a little bit of a workaround to this though that, that is quite handy. If I open up another tab on my browser, I can go in and search for what I'm looking for. So I'll go into software development lifecycle, should find the same images in there. So I'll just go to images. It's a little bit longer of a process, but there's roughly the same image there. I like this one maybe better, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually copy this image. Now I can't right click and paste. That's not going to work. But if I control V, I can paste it in. So I can grab external objects and paste them into the new whiteboard. I think that's a new thing. Here I don't know what percentage I'm in, so I can zoom in and zoom out, but I don't know whether I'm at 100% or whatever the case may be. Uh, I might not care. Now in this case, this particular image actually cuts the line for me. So I'll copy it and paste it several times in. And I'm, you know, again, I'm kind of roughly getting the exact same sort of outline that I had before. So you can see that in, you know, fairly similar way, I can accomplish the same objectives. Now I'm not going to say that one version is better or worse than another version. I have my own preferences at this point, but the final version has not yet come out. So let's wait and see what happens. The one thing we have to recognize is that when it comes to software, consistency matters. So we're going to have a consistent whiteboard in Teams, on the web, and on my desktop. Plus, by having that web-based version, I can use a Mac or even a Raspberry Pi in order to work with the Microsoft Whiteboard and collaborate with others. In my case, I use the Microsoft Whiteboard as a dynamic presentation tool. If I'm going to prepare my lectures, I'm going to use a tool like Sway or PowerPoint or some other products that are available out there like Genially or ThingLink. There's a lot of different ways that I can prepare my lectures. For me, the whiteboard is sort of a scratch pad area that I can share with others and collaborate in a more dynamic way. As you saw with my demo, when I went to the new Microsoft whiteboard, I don't feel it was as smooth of a process and I'm not 100% sure that it's a learning curve issue or if it's a technology issue. That remains to be seen. But again, I have to stress, the new version is not fully released, so I can't really comment on what it's gonna look like when it is. For now, jury's still out with me. I wonder what do you think? Put down comments below on what you think about the new whiteboard compared to the old whiteboard. Put comments down below on whether you think you'll use one or the other. Uh, if they get rid of the old whiteboard altogether, will you start using a different product? Is the new whiteboard so awesome with templates and features that that's the way you want to go? Let me know. I'm very interested in your comments and I will make sure that I create more videos on the Microsoft whiteboard as new changes and new information comes out. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and like, subscribe, and share with people because that really helps out the channel. Thank you again for watching.